press. Uh, thank you for coming at a very short notice. We want to appreciate your response and apologize for the very short notice. I would like to say a few things concerning the security of our country. And uh, you'll excuse me, I'll keep it brief. And I'll rush for an urgent uh, matter in a few minutes. It's good to see all of you, especially in uh, my latest capacity as Minister for Interior and National Administration. I would like to say the following. I take this opportunity on behalf of the government of Kenya to assure all Kenyans and all persons who are lawfully residing in our country that our nation remains safe. In this regard, I would like to appreciate the patriotic and gallant role that is played by our security agencies. And at this moment and on this occasion, I take this opportunity to thank all our officers who are responsible for the internal security of our country, for the sacrifices that they continue to make in making their fellow citizens and other people who are lawfully in Kenya safe together with their property. The overwhelming majority of our officers continue to serve this nation under very difficult circumstances. In the process, we have lost officers in the line of duty. I take this opportunity to tell our officers that the government recognizes the sacrifices that they continue to make. And it is the position of government that no amount of financial or any other form of compensation can reward the patriotic input and sacrifice that our officers continue to make. Many of them continue to protect our people in very hostile and risky situations. And as I have said, as a result, we have lost officers, others have been injured in the line of duty. I reiterate the commitment of the government to defend and protect our officers who are lawfully engaged in their duties and take this opportunity to confirm and assure them the government and I personally as the minister responsible for interior will protect them, defend them and make sure that their sacrifices, their contribution is recognized, appreciated, and guarded jealously. As much as I have said that no amount of compensation can reward our officers enough, I take this opportunity also to inform our officers and the country at large that shortly the government will initiate a process of engagement with a view to relooking at the terms and conditions that our officers serve under, taking cognizance of the fact that for a very long time now, going into nearly 10 years, the terms and conditions upon which our officers in the displayed forces serve have not been reviewed with a view to adjusting them to the cost of living. 
this review will include all the officers within the ambit of this ministry. We shall be announcing shortly how this will be rolled out, how long it will take, and the kind of output that we expect from that process. Having said so, and in spite of the general safety and stability of the country, the government has noted and appreciates that we continue to face significant security challenges. And this afternoon, I want to note three priority challenges that the government is addressing at the moment with a view to ensuring that we enhance the security of our country and make sure every part of Kenya is safe for everyone. First, although the last few years we have not had cases of terrorism, the government remains seized of the existential threat that terrorism poses to our country. In, the, in, the, in this regard, we continue to be on high alert to ensure that we deter, we thwart, we preempt and neutralize any planned terrorist attacks in our country to ensure that the stability we have enjoyed in the last few years continues. I will not be speaking to the operational issues because that is not my mandate and neither is it desirable that we speak about operational issues now. Suffice it to say that the government remains alert vigilant and engaged to ensure that the horrors of terrorism that have hurt our country previously do not visit us. We want to assure Kenyans that the country is safe and free from terrorism. We will continue getting engaged and we want to warn those who think they can plan to hurt our country we will go for them before they come to us. We will go for them before they come to us. Secondly, in the recent weeks, there have been reported incidents of bandit attacks in many parts of the northern part of our country. Recently, His Excellency the President address the issue of banditry, particularly in the counties of the north, during his visit a few days ago in Trukana and Samburu. It is the position of government to follow up on the policy directives and the commitments made by His Excellency the President to ensure that we rid our country from a gang of a few citizens who think that they have the wherewithal to dare and even try to hold fellow citizens at ransom. We are rolling out an unprecedented response against criminals and we are going to go to their hideouts we will look for the criminals and do to them what the law says we do to criminals in accordance with the law of our country and all other applicable international laws. Banditry has assumed not just an economic dimension, but it continues to take new dimensions and increasingly it is appearing that what is happening in the northern part of this country would very easily constitute crimes against humanity. Therefore, 
the government is deploying multifaceted, multi-pronged, multi-agency response to the challenge and the problem of banditry. We have information where they have been retreating to. We know the challenges that have been associated in the past in getting to them. We want to make it clear as government that we are coming to dismantle not only the criminals themselves, but also to bring down the entire chain that has been the cattle or livestock grassling industry. From the financiers, the spiritual supporters, the criminals, the benefactors, and those who purchase livestock stolen from fellow Kenyans. In the last few weeks, these marauding guns of few citizens have dared the government of the Republic of Kenya. And the message they have been trying to send has reached us. We have heard them. These criminals want us to believe that they have the wherewithal, the sophistication, and the endurance to withstand the law for response of the government on crime, especially organized crimes, and crimes bordering on crimes against humanity. We are coming for you effective immediately. And the response will be sustained until we set free our country from the fangs of bandits, criminals, murderers, and profiteers of bloodshed. The less I say of this matter, the better. Finally, we have witnessed increasing criminal activity within the city of Nairobi. A small group of criminals armed with knives and other weapons is terrorizing the citizens of this city, as well as a few other urban centers. Those boys who have dared the government and want to tell us that they can take over the city and make it a city of crime, we have also heard you, and therefore we are coming, effective immediately. We have taken measures already, as I have said, with regard to counter-terrorism, we have started taking measures already, which we cannot announce on the response to bandits and banditry, and we have taken measures to deal with the emerging crime trend in Nairobi. In this regard, the leadership and the command of the police has changed the command of the Nairobi city police deployment effective immediately. The National Police Service also has put in place again a multi-agency, multi-discipline response to this problem to get these our errant sons, maybe daughters, to get them out of our streets and put them where criminals belong to. Therefore, and finally, I once again reiterate the commitment of the government of Kenya to make sure Kenya remains safe. We cannot trade off our freedom and our security for anything. Not for votes, not for anything. And I say so because some of these criminal activities will soon begin taking a political dimension. As I said earlier on, during the process of my approval, 
bandits, terrorists, and other criminals of whatever type have no tribe, they have no political affiliation. Therefore, this administration will spare no effort to make sure that we retain normalcy. We must open up the Kenya of the North to development. And the entry point of that opening up of Northern Kenya is by releasing it from criminals and making it a safe place for investors and government officials engage in development activities as well as development partners. Therefore, I want to assure the country we remain seized of this matter, and I want to assure our officers who are in charge of the various formations related to internal security. The government will support you, facilitate you, and make sure that as you perform this gallant, sometimes risky, service to the nation, you will not be victimized. A few cases that might arise of unlawful use of weapons will be handled in the normal way. I therefore urge your officers to use the responses that we are commencing within the law. Comply with the standing orders of the police. Comply with the law relating to criminal conduct, that is the penal code, CAP 63 of the laws of Kenya, the criminal procedure code, CAP 75 of the laws of Kenya, the evidence acts, CAP 80 of the laws of Kenya, of course the standing orders of the police, but also comply with the constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the applicable international 